Let's bring in our radio talk show panel, Larry O'Connor and Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall. Nice to see you both. Uh, it's too bad Hi, there's nothing else in President Trump's speech from last night to talk about, so we can just, you know, <laughs> see what we're all doing this Sunday afternoon. Uh, Leslie, though, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see you're so well rested. I thought you wouldn't be able to sleep. You'd be so angry with this speech. Oh, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, I should thank the president. What he did uh, last night is what he does when he's off script. He, he moves it to himself because he's a narcissist. He also was a dictator in the making last night. I mean, you're talking about how great China is and talking again, repeating the Filipino president who is a dictator's desire to have all drug uh, dealers killed. Hey, forget, forget even due process. And then in addition to that, just the name calling, the juvenile name calling. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Yes, please remind America okay. the type of man you are. We do like that stiff presidential look, most of us who did not vote for him. <laughs> well, uh, somebody who not only didn't vote for him, but worked hard to get Hillary Clinton elected, her former senior advisor, on last night with a slightly different take. Take a listen. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Boy, does Donald Trump know how to keep an audience in the palm of his hands. It right. actually is remarkable to watch. Um, second, I understand why that man won in 2016. And I understand, I'm not terrified, but I understand why he may very well win again in 2020. Uh, let Trump be Trump. Hey, Larry. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think Philippe uh, was speaking some truth there. And I, yeah, the fact of the matter is well, Hold, hold speech... on, we need to mark this part of the tape where you and Philippe yeah. actually <laughs> actually exactly. agree on something. Yeah, yeah, I know. Did you feel the, the, the sky open for yes, a moment there? Yes, yes. Uh, the fact is, when the president goes to a part of the country like this, you know, the, the suburbs of Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania, and he delivers a speech that uh, makes Leslie upset, that's a good sign. That actually, that actually mm. does good for him. It helps him. It, it, may, uh, do and, good, and it may do good for no, him. No, it does. Sure, and sure. it actually gets him votes. Remember, all the things you're saying about him right now is exactly what made you think that Hillary was going to win I, I'm not sure if you're talking to didn't. me or Leslie. I think uh, all the things Leslie, Leslie. Were, Leslie were saying. Okay, <laughs> but, but it, it brings up an yeah. important point. Sarah Westwood brought this up, so I can't claim credit for it. But we're all talking, uh, everyone really, about what President Trump said about killing drug dealers or about North Korea or about his success on tariffs. We're not talking about Rick Saccone, who is now in a dead heat for this race. Mm -hmm. and the, the thing that he went there to do isn't what we're talking about. Is that a danger? I don't know. He hasn't lost. Uh, Republicans have not lost any of these House special elections yet under Trump, even though, uh, just like Ebony well, said, it's, it's always a litmus test. It's always, I said House races. Okay. It's always a litmus test. It's always a litmus test. And yet each time when the Republican wins, it's no longer a litmus test. The fact of the matter is the Obama administration pardoned 1,700 drug dealers in the final couple of years of his presidency. The president is not going to enact a death penalty. The president cannot enact a death penalty. That would take an act of Congress. That's how our Congress works. That's how our government works. But the people of Pennsylvania who are looking at these two extremes, one president who wants to release drug dealers and the other one who's using rhetoric to say maybe we should get a little tougher on drugs, <laughs> I think most voters say, yeah, we probably should get a little tougher on drugs. Leslie? <laughs> uh, first of all, let's have the sky open further because I want to point out two things Larry said that I agree with. He said that Trump Ooh. does very well in these types of districts. Yes, because those are districts he won by double digits, 20% he won in the general election, that specific district he was standing in. So with his base, yes, he does very good. Secondly, the, the speech didn't upset me. I said it didn't upset me. It invigorates me and yeah. other Democrats, which is why you're going to see, it doesn't need to be a litmus test, you're going to see a change, because you are going to see a blue, whether it's a wave or yeah. a ripple, and you flip enough seats, you may flip uh, the majority from Republican to Democrat. And then uh, in in addition to that, um, I, I want to bring it back to what you said, Leland. This mm -hmm. is why historically and statistically, you can have big names on the left, a Bill Clinton on the right, a Donald Trump, go to races that are neck and neck. And I just don't feel, if you look at the numbers, that it makes a difference because eventually yeah. they end up bringing it back to themselves. Well, I think something we can both agree on, or all three of us can, and that is that for as wonderful of a campaigner as President Obama was for himself, to prove uh, your point, Leslie, he didn't turn out to be a great campaigner campaigner for anybody else, Hillary Clinton uh, being an yeah. abject lesson uh, there. Larry, Leslie, yeah. uh, great great conversation. I am, I am waiting for the sun to come out so I can go for a jog later. <laughs> the, <laughs> the sky is opening. Thanks, guys.